From the heart of Philly, this is CBS News Philadelphia on Philly 57. Now at 8, the U.S. House votes to ban TikTok. What's next for the bill as it heads to the Senate? A new lawsuit related to a widely used weight loss drug. The possible danger some patients say they were not warned about. And armed, dangerous, and on the run. U.S. Marshals released the name and photo of the fourth suspect wanted in last week's SEPTA bus stop shooting. Good Wednesday evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Siaf Lewis. It has now been one week since eight high school students were shot while waiting for a SEPTA bus in the Northeast. Three suspects are in custody, but a fourth remains on the run. This afternoon, U.S. Marshals released this photo of 17-year-old Asir Boone. They say he frequents only, but his last known address is in Germantown. Agents are also offering a $5,000 reward for information leading to his capture. If you were to come across Boone, do not approach him. We need to reiterate the fact that he is considered armed and dangerous. Here's CBS News Philadelphia reporter Nikki Dementri with more. Chaos in the Northeast. In the pouring rain, witnesses shared details on what unfolded at a SEPTA bus stop in Burholm last Wednesday. When is it going to stop? These are children, killing, killing children. Philadelphia police say gunfire erupted at that rising sun in Cotman Avenue's bus stop, injuring eight Northeast High School students. Two SEPTA buses were also caught in the crossfire. No one on board was injured. Doris works at the nearby Quaker Diner. I have three boys. It could have been one of my children. You know, when the kids came running in, I just tried to keep them calm. Later Wednesday night, Philadelphia police released this surveillance video. Three suspects can be seen running out of a Hyundai Sonata towards the bus stop and then driving away. Police say the stolen car was found in Olney. Neighbors shared with us how they ran to help those injured. Pulled my belt off and, like, you know, put it around his leg and just told him to hold on to it and, like, you know, don't let it go. Then over the weekend, Philadelphia police arrested two 18 year olds for their involvement in the shooting. Investigators note Jamal Tucker turned himself in on Friday. Anil Bugs was taken into custody by the U.S. Marshal Service Saturday morning. A weapon, police say, used in the shooting was recovered where Bugs was staying. The announcement came as earlier this week. Northeast High School students were. Turn to the classroom. I'm very happy for that news. The problem is actually even bigger, is because the city officials for the last so many years, they've been saying that about the safety and the security of the people in the city, but I don't see any difference. By Tuesday afternoon, police had three suspects in custody. The U.S. Marshals picked up 19 year old Jamad Carter at a home in the Northeast. This all happening as the search for a fourth suspect, Asir Boone, continues. The family is very aware that we are looking for our fourth suspect. They were somewhat cooperative. Philadelphia police said there were no updates available today on the conditions of those eight teenagers who were injured. At police headquarters, Nikki Dementri, CBS News, Philadelphia. CBS News Philadelphia has learned that bail has been set for the three shooting suspects who are in custody. Both Jamal Tucker and Hanail Biggs are being held on a $16 million bail. Jermon Carter is being held on a $4 million bail. All three face several charges, including attempted murder. Stay with CBS News Philadelphia on air and online for the latest developments in this case. The police have arrested a second suspect, a woman, in connection with last month's deadly shooting in Fairmont Park. Detectives found the bodies of 49-year-old Thurston Cooper and 38-year-old Christina Chambers near the historic Mount Pleasant Mansion. They were shot execution style. A 52-year-old man was arrested earlier this week for his alleged role in the shooting. Turning now to our weather. What can you say? There aren't enough adjectives. An absolutely gorgeous, spectacular day today. This is a video from Spring Garden earlier today. Nice day to be outside for just about anything. Let's check it out with meteorologist Grant Gilmore in for Bill Kelly tonight to see what's in our next weather forecast. Hey, Grant. Yeah, we just want to say there's another day like today, right? See yes, please. Just repeat. Repeat on repeat. Copy and paste, however you want to describe it. We want another like day like today. Keep it coming. And I think we will, but things will change, though, pretty quickly as we get closer to the weekend. Let's talk about how things are out there across the area this evening. As we head over to the big wall here, temperatures hanging out generally in the low and mid 60s right now, 62 degrees in Philadelphia, 64 degrees in Trenton. Some of you have dipped into the 50s already, but it will continue to cool under mostly clear skies. But man, this afternoon, 73 was the actual high temperature at the Philadelphia International Airport, the warmest day 
since October 28th. Yeah, it's been a while since we've had temperatures this warm. Spring, yep, it's certainly in the air. Our normal high temperatures, 52 degrees. We're feeling more like what you'd expect the high temperatures to be on May 12th. Again, a warmer day tomorrow, looking pretty good out there. The next eight hours, though, this evening looks really nice. We'll see temperatures gradually cooling through the 50s. We'll bottom out right there near 50 degrees to start off tomorrow morning. And then your afternoon tomorrow, back into the middle 70s as we go. 75 degrees tomorrow in Philadelphia. Down the shore, just a beautiful day. Temperatures near 73 in Atlantic City, 74 in Wilmington, and then up through the Lehigh Valley. Temperatures returning to the low and mid 50s. So spring-like temperatures, they hang around. Small chances for some rain as we head through the seven-day forecast. But after that, near freezing temperatures back in that seven-day forecast. We're looking at rain and, yeah, uh, a little bit below normal temperatures down the road. Siapa, we'll get to it in just a few. All right, Grant, thank you so much. Well, the U.S. House of Representatives has overwhelmingly passed a bill targeting the popular social media app TikTok. Two thirds being in the affirmative, the rules are suspended, the bill is passed. The bill now moves to the Senate where it faces an uncertain future. It requires TikTok to separate from its owner ByteDance, which is based in China, or be banned from U.S. app stores in six months. TikTok needs to decide whether they value their users or their ties to the Chinese Communist Party more. Supporters of the bipartisan bill cited national security concerns, arguing that the Chinese government could force ByteDance to hand over the data of its 170 million American users. That's something TikTok has long denied it would do. President Biden says he would sign the bill if it reaches his desk. His Republican opponent, Donald Trump, once threatened to ban TikTok, but he now opposes this bill, saying it would shift too much undue influence to Facebook. This does come, however, come, however, after he was lobbied by someone with stock in TikTok. Business owners and influencers could soon be left in limbo if TikTok is in fact banned. CBS Philadelphia's Josh Sanders spoke with two local influencers on what the legislation, if signed into law, would mean for them. We're just two women out of Philadelphia who we get kids out the system and we shower them with love. Two years ago, Lila Jones joined TikTok as a way to invite others into her blended family, and something unexpected happened. I got on TikTok with my family and it went viral. Um, at that time, I, was, I just had my wife's biological two kids and then we had one, my, my, my four-year-old. He was our first child. Um, it went viral, then our story went viral. Her TikTok, legendary.always, gained two million followers. Together, she and her wife have six kids. Four of them were adopted from foster care. Just showing like a different side of the foster care system and of these babies and a positive side and just trying to be the role models we can be for the city. Jones is a teacher and says TikTok has provided extra income for her family. We're about to go to Disney World fully on TikTok. Um, so it, it's, it's creating a, 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 a nice, 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 nice vision for our kids. But now she and other influencers using TikTok may have to look for other avenues to share content if Congress passes a law to ban the platform. Eagles just signed New York City Giants running back Saquon Barkley. I know what you're all thinking. Who is Saquon Barkley and what is a running back? Katie Kahn teaches 11th grade in Philadelphia, but also provides sports comedy to her 153,000 TikTok followers under the handle Katie Actually. I've come to actually depend on like that, like extra money for like whatever random stuff maybe I wouldn't have been, um, you know, spending money on before. It's kind of like fun. If it were to be actually banned, uh, there are other social media platforms, you know, I would I would hope that the community I've built would just follow me to Instagram or follow me to YouTube. As Jones and Khan wait to see if the bill passes the Senate, they say they will continue to create content on TikTok, bringing love and humor to others. Now, the House bill is expected to face challenges in the Senate with some lawmakers feeling it violates the First Amendment. Josh Sanders, CBS News, Philadelphia. Now, if you're still wondering what the big deal is, this might help out. TikTok is the number one downloaded app in more than 40 countries worldwide. Apple says it was the fifth most popular download in their app store last year. And when it comes to down to cold hard cash, NASDAQ says TikTok is valued at $50 billion. Its parent company, ByteDance, is worth $275 billion.